Yeah, I camped a lot as a kid, and then I went to a serious outdoorsy camp where I learned to pick plants and eat them and uh, go hiking and canoeing and kayaking and a general respect for the outside. And then I, I found architecture in the middle of college as a thing that synthesized all my interests. That you know, reading novels and listening to music and playing outside and just being an observant person in the world. Eventually that led me to furniture design. And at one point I visited a friend who worked at NASA and had this dream that I could live in New York and design furniture for Mars. NASA created this office that I was as equipped for as anyone else. They were coping with the engineering problem of supporting life in space. So they started hiring a few architects to try to think about, you know, not beauty so much, but quality of life. So how do you account for the fact that these two people are from different countries, they speak different languages, they're in a stressful situation. So at some point I left NASA um, and devoted myself to earth design. Our RV is a good thing, a lot of people have them. What is an appropriate RV that's sensitive to the environment, that encourages people to get outside, um, that is not a house on wheels? So all that research led to Cricket, where it's like, what performance specifications can I put together for a trailer that means, in a systemic way, you don't have to buy a new car, that a lot of four-cylinder things can tow a Cricket, it sleeps two adults and two kids, it's appropriate at campgrounds that like RVs, it's appropriate off the grid because you can go for four or five days a week with solar power and battery power. Comfortable camping halfway between a tent and a house on wheels. And then the Firefly, which is behind me, is an extension of that. So this is a 600 pound toolbox luggage rack that you happen to be able to sleep and sit comfortably inside. So that means it can be thrown in the back of a small pickup truck and go very far off road if that's your thing. Or it can be attached to a tiny utility trailer and hauled by a mini club van. This is a, our first prototype. Haven't really thought about colors too much, but it can be colored. It can be, you know, if it's aluminum and glinting in the sun, it could be like a reflection on a pond. You know, we want to be recessive in that way and be part of an ecosystem of the ecology, certainly, but aesthetically and uh, blending in as much or as little as you want to. Whether this is on a street corner with a mobile DJ pumping out music or on the top of a mountain somewhere hoisted by a helicopter, that's really fun to think about it. How do you design something that allows all those uses and the human? We have this option of our lunar lander legs that you can put on to take it off a truck or off a trailer and have it standing in a field or on top of a mountain. This you can see is a double bed. I mentioned all the racks outside. We have places to attach things on the inside. Um, all these seat cushions, this is double bed size, flip up to provide access to your gear or potentially for uh, sitting inside on a rainy day. So you can put on and off muddy boots. These are our interior racks made for uh, attaching anything, for hanging lights, wet towels and clothes, for uh, strapping your, you know, cleaning up your room. You get to be as compulsively neat or as messy as you please. Windows with a magical clicking option. Shade screen miracle, not my design. Standard procedure in European campers. We can go out and drive this on a dirt road and see what falls apart. Is it leaking? Does it let bugs in? Do we wish we had a screen door? All these things. That's why there are four or five or 10 prototypes on the way to a real product. Design is an iterative process and improvement really is an iterative process. For me, in my path, it's been you know, humans and performance and machines and methods of manufacturing and materials and the environment. Because everything is, in fact, knitted together. So you really have to be conscious and self-conscious of the way it's knitted together. I'm a designer, but when you discover that your designer brain applies over here in an unexpected spot and solving that problem actually solves this problem, is really beautiful and worthwhile.